Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to see how to deploy your neural network or scikit-learn model into a web application. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. So now we're going to see how to actually make a web application. In the previous part, we saw how to create a Flask web service that allowed us to expose our neural network as an API. This is the first step to really creating a web application that allows you to interact with your model. You're going to basically create the web application and you're going to take data from the user, form that request as an API, send it to yourself to that same Flask container that we just created, and then present that back to the user. The end application is shown here as a screenshot essentially in the notebook for this class. We'll see exactly how to run that and we'll try it with a with an image. Now, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use something called React.js. And React is essentially a front-end framework that allows you to represent graphical user interface elements. There's been a ton of these over the years, like jQuery and Angular, many iterations of Angular. There's all kinds of them. There's even some newer ones called Vue and others. This is just the one that I am using. It seems to be a pretty good one. It's an attempt to get you somewhat away from the document object model that a lot of these were previously built on, like jQuery. I won't get too deep into that. That's more web development, of which I am definitely not an expert, but I do enough web development to allow my artificial intelligence creations to be seen from websites. I do give you a link to a blog post. I also borrowed some of the structure of this from a non-AI example in React, but it was really just to upload an image, and then took that and went further to do image recognition. Now you'll notice there is not much here on the notebook for this web application. That's because you're not going to run it from the notebook. So you won't be able to run this from Colab or from your notebook. We're going to go to the terminal in a moment and actually run it. But let me show you the main files that are contained here. First of all, we'll look at the web server itself. This is a Python file. This is running actually in Flask. So this is what's going to actually drive it. This is an exact copy with additions from the Flask API that we created to first wrap that image classifying neural network mobile net. So essentially what we're going to do here, this is all just like before, but I'll review it in case you're jumping in at this point. We are going to, now this is new, we're going to expose the, the www directory. So this becomes very web server-esque. So this is where we're going to put our CSS files and any graphic files or just other static files like HTML that we need. Everything in this web application is static because the only dynamic part is truly the API. So React is basically building up that JSON request that we saw and sending it over so that we can get this image classified. Everything else is the same. You could use the same exact API that you had from the earlier one and have it serve both external applications trying to access it and actually the web application that we're creating here. So this is a real power of this type of development. It's called API first. So basically you design your APIs and then you do a static sort of level on top of it where we are essentially presenting the data and getting the, the results back. In the past in web development, you would typically post something that directly from a form, that request would go to the to a CGI or something that would actually handle it and re-render the entire page for you. The newer style for this very much is you have the the front end code, the, jo the front end JavaScript, collect that and send it to the same sort of an API that an external application would make use of. And we're mapping in things like the other things so that we can get the, the default, the index HTML and other things. We set up the post. This is where we're going to actually query the neural network. We display errors, like if you don't send an image, that's going to be an error. And we get the image out of the packet that is being sent to us. 
and we essentially try to classify it. So we're going to, we get the file name, we make sure that it's a secure file name, that you're uploading the type of file that we expect. And then we're going to essentially open the image. Now it's important, we're not actually saving the image anywhere. We're actually streaming it right from the HTTP to the neural network. So we're not like creating a temp file or anything. We are going to expand the dimensions so that we, so it's in the shape that the convolution neural network is expecting. And then this code here is very useful. I did not put this in the previous version. I'll probably copy it at some point so you might see it in the previous version. This is essentially just truncating the alpha channel. So you should have red, green, and blue. If you're dealing with an image that has transparency and it has an alpha channel, that can freak out the convolution neural network because that's a fourth channel. So this just makes sure that there is no actual transparency or alpha channel being uploaded to you as well. We ask for the actual prediction and we decode the predictions. The decoded predictions let us know what it actually is, like a car or a boat, and what percentage. We're going to get the top five, and we send those across. Now the front end might only display the top one or the top two or something like that, but we're sending all five there for the front end to decide what it's doing. And we form this basically into a JSON packet and send it across. Same JSON packet that we dealt with in the previous parts. So this all is exactly the same that we saw. This is how you build an API around your neural network. Now let's see how we actually make this interface into the web application. So you've got the style and the script JS. I'm not going to explain the style and the index.html all that much. These are really pretty minimalistic since React is building everything completely up. All that this really has is the title for it in the HTML. Everything else will be built up dynamically. So let's just look at the script file because this is what is going to actually handle building up the request, sending it to the API, and dealing with the GUI elements. This is all client-side JavaScript, so it's running in the user's browser. Just to show you some of what's going on here, there's really three parts to this. The constructor is this part. It is basically keeping what state needs to be stored in the React.js program. Now, React.js deals with state so that it know, so that it can redraw the entire page anytime needed. And the state determines essentially what state it's in. Now, we need to know what file was uploaded and the image and then whatever message we're generating on that image because we want to put an Im a message below the image. Handle submit. This happens when you click the, the button to actually upload the image. We essentially let whatever default was going to happen on that event. And now we actually get the data from the image. We're going to send the image right from the, the user upload directly to the API, which will then send it directly to the neural network. Everything is streamed so that we have no intermediate temp files needing to be created or anything messy like that. We're going to build up the HTTP request that we're going to actually send it over. And we are going to essentially just post the image right across. This is very simple. I mean, we are just literally taking the image and dumping it onto the API endpoint. It's important that we have this image here because that's the HTML form element that the image is actually being embedded into. If you call this image two, then we wouldn't find it. So you could upload multiple images at the same time if you needed to send several of those across. Once we send this, we essentially assign a callback function. JavaScript is very reactive, so that means you don't block. You really cannot block and wait for something to finish. So essentially, we're going to tack this function on, which is going to wait for that post to finish, and then we immediately exit. Now, when we get the result back from that on load, we check to make sure the status this is correct. If the status was not good, then we reject the, the promise, so to speak, the callback, and say that we did not get a, a good result from that. And we're going to return the status text 
text from the HTTP and we log it so that we know that we see what we got, we're going to get the probabilities. I do round the probability so that we don't have all these annoying trailing decimal places. And then we essentially build the message that we have. Now the important thing in React is we are not just modifying some on-screen DOM element. We're literally changing the state so that the next time that we render, which is down here, that is going to render all of these elements. Now normally you would probably use JSX for this. Then you would have non-standard JavaScript because it would literally have tags intermixed in there. Since this is not a tutorial on React, I left that out and basically did just standard JavaScript code. But this could all look very HTML-like if you use JSX. Essentially what I'm doing is re-rendering all of these and however the message comes back, because this is the key point here, we are going to re-render that message underneath the image that the user uploaded. And by the way, the image when the user does actually upload is done by this handle image change. That's where we actually give the pre preview of the image that the user is selecting. And once you, you have this all, you can send the request and get it back from your API that contains your neural network. The key to all of this is right here, where it is actually invoking the HTTP request and getting your results back. You're dealing essentially with two programming languages. You're dealing with JavaScript, which you need to deal with on the front end, and you're dealing with Python. And you're dealing with Python. So let's go ahead and run it so that we can see what that looks like. What you see running here is essentially the notebook that I had. We don't really need the notebook. So this is, this is going to fail out behind me. I'll go into that Python directory that I provide and you can see image web server one. So we'll go and run that and we run it. it takes a moment to start up. Definitely allow your firewall to route it through. Now you can see that we are running on HTTP and port 5000. So let's go ahead and run this, execute it from the web. And there is our web application. So all these GUI elements, that was from those React elements that I Went through. I'm not going to give you a React.js tutorial on how you literally build something like this, but it's a very minimal amount of code that I had in there. So you, you can definitely read up on some of the links that I gave you if you want to learn more about web development. There's already a ton of channels and other things out there. I definitely will not be delving too deep into web development. And we'll go to the photos from my class website. Different, we'll do me working with a laptop. Now we're not doing multiple images like YOLO. So if there's multiple images in here, one's gonna just dominate over the other, at least as best it can. So that's me, a dog, and a laptop. This is this would be great for YOLO, but we'll recognize the image. And yeah, it likes the laptop better than me and the dog. Can't blame it. But laptop, 45%. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.